Good evening. If anybody's there, could you let me know? Just want to make sure that we're connected and um, you can hear me. So praise the Lord. It's one minute before seven. There you are, Sister Lori Chokas. It's nice to see you tonight. You're the first one on. You are numero uno. God bless you. Sister Thais, nice to see you tonight. Getting ready here for uh, some word of God tonight. Looking forward to it. And all the men are gathered here at the olive tree tonight. And Good evening, Jessica. And uh, the ladies are over at the church. And my, oh my, did we have a wonderful, wonderful move of God this morning. It was just beyond. It was beyond, beyond. It was uh, such a presence of God. And the Lord is really um, trying to get our attention, isn't he? He wants us to pray. And uh, he wants us to be in one accord. And I was looking at a uh, scripture in Acts today. This is not my message, but I was looking at uh, some things in Acts. When the early church started, it said they were all in one accord in prayer and supplication. And that's kind of what it felt like this morning. But in the book of Acts, when that first move of God came, after the power of the Holy Ghost came on them, it was, uh, it said, Peter preached, and over 3,000 people came to the Lord that day, were water baptized, and they went on to serve God. And what I like about it is that the disciples planted those folks in the local church. And uh, so they could grow. And that's why we need church, don't we? We need the house of God. We need a pastor. We need church leadership. We need God's fellowship. And uh, without that, we're just hanging out there by ourselves. So I'm really excited uh, that we have a wonderful church here in Manchester. Hey, Willie B. Shelton, nice to see you tonight, all the way from Georgia. God bless you, Brother Greg, Sister Laura Parker. From Georgia too. Got two folks from Georgia on here. Sister Donna, nice to see you tonight. Sister Gloria Levine, God bless you. Are you in Excel She's Deo tonight? I'm sure you are. Brother Martin, God bless you. We're going to start here pretty soon and uh, we're going to get going in just a few minutes. I don't know about you, but I am ready for spring. Anybody else put a little Note up there, a little high five or something. You ready for spring? And uh, it looked like we were going to get it last week. It looked like we were going to get it. And, uh, and then this weekend came. And we're right back into January. So, oh, Sister Thais, you're in Atlanta. God bless you. That's three folks from Georgia. Brother Gabe, nice to see you tonight. And uh, so I heard there's one sure sign of spring. And this must be a crazy wives' tale. Got up the other morning, I believe it was Wednesday morning, and uh, I went off, I have a little part-time job, and I went down and, and a couple of the guys were there. And, and uh, it was funny because I woke up in the morning, stepped outside, and I smelled a skunk. And uh, so I told my wife, I said, man, that's unusual, it's only February. And I was driving to work and I was in Coventry and got about five miles from our house. And, and I smelled another skunk as I was driving. Got a little ways down the road and I saw a dead skunk in the road. So I got into work in Manchester and one of the fellows there says, man, he goes, it's a sure sign of spring today. And I said, why is that? He goes, it's the first official day of spring. He said, because the skunks came out. He said they had skunks out all over where he lives in South Windsor. And I talked to someone else that lives in another town over the next day and they said Wednesday the skunks were out. So if that's a sign of spring, I'll take it. I'll put up, I'll put up with, the, with the skunks because I am ready for no snow. I am ready for 60 degrees. Can I get an amen on that one? I hope. I hope all you folks are, uh, are had, have had enough winter. Unless you are living, hey, Brother Andy, unless you're living down in Georgia where it's probably about 65 degrees tonight, um, 
Oh, springtime in Georgia, Sister Laura, it's got to be 80 when it gets to be springtime in Georgia, doesn't it? Reverend Mancini, how are you tonight? God bless you. God bless you, Sister Janet. Well, tonight I think we're going to get started in a minute. And uh, it's uh, nobody... Hey, Brother Mark Swaggerty, God bless you. Nice to see you tonight. Are you traveling? Every time I see you on Facebook, you're either in California or Florida or Texas, Chicago, somewhere. And uh, got, got a great, great job there. Sister Sue, how are you? God bless you. It's so nice to see everybody tonight. And uh, Sister Pearl. Sister Pearl, my friend, it's so nice to see you. Hope you're doing well, dear. And uh, I miss being able to give you a hug when you come in the church. And, uh, but that day will come soon, I'm sure. So God bless you, Sister Pearl. Well, I think we're going to get started tonight. And uh, I'm going to bring just a, a little thought tonight. It's, uh, it's nothing that will get you jumping and shouting, but I'm hoping it will help you. Um, kind of thought of it today after that wonderful message we heard this morning on prayer and uh, prayer being connected connected to heaven and uh, when we're connected to heaven anything is possible when we're connected to heaven oh my lord you know god will can move he moved certainly moved in our midst this morning and uh, so i'm going to talk to you this morning about abiding in the vine uh, this morning i guess it's not morning is it Kind of feels like morning because I took a nice nap this afternoon. Um, but abiding in Christ. And uh, if you have your Bibles tonight, um, we're going to turn to John chapter 15. And we're going to read verses 4, 5, and 7. And it says, Jesus said, I am the vine. And yeah, oh, you know what I forgot? I forgot the offering. And I am sorry um, for that. Tonight, if uh, you'd like to give... Um, you can go to our church website and uh, to FGI Church, PO, I'm sorry, <laughs> FGIChurch.org um, and press the donate button and you'll be able to give through that. Or you can mail your offering into FGI Church, PO Box 4017, Manchester, Connecticut. Or you can also go to the Easy Tithe app and type in the church name, Full Gospel Interdenominational Church. Hi, Sister Nicole. Nice to see you tonight. Hope you're doing well. And uh, so we're just starting out in the book of John, chapter 15. I guess nobody liked my skunk illustration. <laughs> Amen. I don't like skunks, but I like spring. So praise the Lord. Chapter 15, verse 4, verse 5 rather, Jesus said, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abides in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Sister Nancy, how are you tonight? Then he goes on to say, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you, can, you will ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. I love those scriptures. I do. I missed verse 5 where it says, Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. As the branch, I'm sorry, he that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Those are some powerful scriptures tonight. Abiding in the vine, abiding in Christ. One of the most vivid and powerful illustrations for our relationship with the Lord is in the vine and the branches. But what does it mean to abide? What does it mean to abide? There's three things that are implied here in the word abide. This is just a little study tonight. The three things that are implied in the word abide are the word connection, dependence, and continuance. We need today, especially today in the day we live, to be connected. 
We need to be connected not just to the Lord, which is our most important thing, but we need to be connected to the church. And we need to be connected to fellowship. We, oh yes, we need to be dependent on him. And we need to continue in his word. First, I want to talk about the word connection. Abiding in Jesus, first of all, means having a life-giving connection to him. A branch, we all know, we've all seen trees, I'm sure, but a branch is connected to the vine and a vine is connected to the branch. Notice that this connection and this union is mutual. We abide in him, hallelujah, and he abides in us. Aren't you thankful and grateful tonight that when we abide in him, excuse me, he abides in us. Oh, the old song says, if, if he abides in me and, and is worth his words abide in me, we'll ask what we will, then it shall be done unto us. So in our personal lives, if there is no connection, there's no life and there's no fruit. So that's about the word connection. Now, the word abide also implies to be dependent. The branch, and here's something that we all need to know, and I'm sure we do, but just to be reminded of tonight. The branch is dependent on the vine, but the vine is not dependent on the branch. The branch derives its life and power from the vine. This is very important. I can do nothing without him. Hallelujah. Without the vine, the branch is useless, it's lifeless, and it's powerless. Life flows from the vine to the branch, and it supplies it with water, as we know. It supplies it with minerals and nutrients that cause it to grow. And believers receive this life, hallelujah, of God's love and his grace through our life-giving connection to him. We should always be completely dependent upon Jesus for everything in our life that counts as spiritual fruit, because apart from him, we can do nothing. Oh, I depend on him. I don't know about you, but I depend on the Lord Jesus Christ for so many, many things. The word abide also implies continuance. Oh yes, we must continue in his word. We must continue to remain or stay or continue. This simply means that we go on trusting, that we keep on depending, and that we never stop believing. You may believe, be believing God for something tonight. I don't know what that is. It could be something in your body. It could be a sickness. It could be someone you're praying for. It could be a financial need. Are you connected to the vine? Are you dependent upon Jesus? And are you continuing in his word? If we can do all those things, the life of the Lord, his life, his spirit, will flow through us, and anything is possible. We must go on trusting and depending and never stop believing his word. Never. This is what Jesus talked about in John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. He said, if you continue in my word, if you abide in my word, in my presence, he said, in the vine, if we continue in the vine, then you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Hallelujah. I just want to put my hands up right now and to know that the truth of his word has set me free. It changed my life forever, and it changed your life. So to abide in the vine means that we are united to Christ. Are you united to him tonight? Have you maybe lost your connection somewhere along the line? 
Are you dependent upon him? And are you continuing in his presence and in his servanthood? How many of you folks remember Sister Gertrude Worrell? Oh, my, our blessed sister from Barbados. She passed away many years ago. And she used to get up in church and sing with that accent. Oh, that beautiful song. Abiding in the vine, abiding in the vine. Love, joy, health, and peace. Jesus makes them mine. And it went on to say, I've got the victory, a home in glory, when I'm abiding and abiding in the vine. And then we sing, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Oh, my God. That branch that abides and stays connected to the life of the vine is a person who values and cherishes his very presence. It's a person who cherishes and values the friendship of God and cherishes the still, small voice that speaks to us every day. Oh, think, just think about that for a minute. Just think about that for a minute. Do you value and cherish the very presence of God? Do you cherish his friendship? Are you a friend of God tonight? If you're a friend of God, oh, if you're a friend of God, I am a friend of God. Friends do things for friends. Friends carry each other through storms. Oh, and he'll be there every step of the way. Hey, Brother Henry, nice to see you tonight. God bless you. A Christian who daily prays in the Spirit of God is a Christian who's alive in Christ. This morning we had a great message and a great reminder from the Lord that we need to pray every day. We need to not just pray, but we need to really pray. We need to get into his presence, continue in his presence, hook up to his vine, let his life flow through us. When Paul addressed the people on Mars Hill in Acts chapter 17, he said to them, if you seek the Lord, he is not very far from any one of us. Because in him we live and we move and we have our being. For we are also his offspring. Oh, we're a, chill, we're a child of God tonight. That means his life is in us. Life came to me from my parents, from my father. Life, spiritual life, comes to me from my heavenly father. Our life comes from him. Our soul came from him. Our very existence begins and ends with Jesus Christ. If his life is in you tonight, then victory is yours. Is his life in you tonight? If it's not, I encourage you to find a church. We have a really good one right here in Manchester, if you're in the area. If you need life in your life, then you need Jesus Christ, because he is the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. Our life comes from him, and your very existence begins and ends with Jesus Christ. If his life is in you, if his life is in you tonight, then victory is yours. A home and glory is yours. The love of God is yours. Joy is yours. Health is yours. And his peace is yours. Yes, Sister Janet, he'll become your all in all because you're abiding, abiding in that vine. And we need to abide in his presence. You know, we think, oh, I can only, I can only uh, be in his presence when I come to church. No. No. Yes, and that's a very good place to be in his presence because it's his house. But you're his house too. And every day, you can abide in his presence, calling on his name, praying in the Holy Ghost. You see, Moses cherished the presence of God. Do you know that God's presence gives you rest? I, I know before I was saved, I needed rest in my soul. I don't know about you, 
but I needed rest. Why? Well, I, I had no peace. No peace. Jesus came and he gave me rest. In Exodus chapter 33, we're going to turn there for a moment, if you're there. In uh, Exodus 33, 9 through 15. Actually, I'm just going to read down a little bit further. and um, I'm not going to start at the very beginning. You can read some of that for time's sake. Moses said to the Lord, See thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name. Ho, oh, God knows your name tonight. And thou hast found grace in my sight. Have you found the grace of God tonight? God said to him, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. Ho, oh, do you want God's presence to go with you tonight? Hook up to the vine. Let his life flow through you. It goes on down to say, I'm going to read this here. And I'm sorry because I lost my place. But that's okay. But what the point of it is, is Moses said, Lord, if you're not going to go with me, then I don't want to be there. At the end of this, these verses, Moses cherished and valued God's presence so much. He said, if your presence go not with me, then carry me not up hence. We don't want to go where you're not. Huh. I don't want to go anywhere where God isn't. I don't know about you. We need God's presence every minute of every hour of every single day. For without him, we can do nothing. In this journey of our life and our daily walk with him, we need his presence. All through the Bible, our forefathers needed God's presence. In Genesis chapter 28, 15, God told Jacob, I am with thee. Tonight, God is with you. And God said, I will keep thee in all places that thou goest and will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee, hallelujah, until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. God he said, I will never leave you, and I'll never forsake you. His presence not only gives us rest, his presence will give us courage. How many need courage tonight? <laughs> I think we all could use a little bit of courage today in the day that we're living. Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 1 says, When thou goest out to battle against thine enemies, and you see horses and chariots and the people more than you, be not afraid of them, for the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. What are you facing today? What kind of battle are you facing today? I think we're all facing some things. Our world is coming to a place where we have to fight to keep our Christianity every day. And the only way we can do that is stay in the presence of God. Hallelujah. When you see these things, when you see a people more than thou, Oh, if the Christian, there's nobody more outnumbered in this world today than the Christian. When you see a people more than thou, be not afraid of them, for the Lord thy God is with thee. When you go on the job, the Lord's with you. Hallelujah. When you go to the store, God's with you. His presence is a comfort in our trials. Isaiah 43, 2 says, When thou passest through the waters... I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle thee. Jesus. His presence will be with us until the very end. Matthew 28, 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, 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 even unto the end of the world. Even to the end of your trial, even to the end of your sickness, God's abiding presence will be with you. And his abiding presence will make you fruitful. Oh, who wants to be fruitful tonight? I want to be fruitful. I don't know about you. I want to bring forth fruit for Christ. Colossians 1.10 says that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work 
and increasing in the knowledge of the Lord. I came across a picture quite a, oh, a couple of years ago. I can't show it to you tonight. But it was a picture of, it was, it was taken on the island of Crete. It's a picture of an olive tree. It's the oldest olive tree in the world. It's over 3,000 years old. Think of that. A tree over 3,000 years old. It's still producing olives 3,000 years later. To put it into perspective, the Apostle Paul probably sat under that olive tree 2,000 years ago, excuse me, and marveled at it and said, look at this olive tree. It's 1,000 years old and it's still bringing forth fruit. Here we are 2,000 years later and this tree is still producing. He may have looked at it and said, look, it's still producing olives. It's gnarled and it's twisted. And this tree was gnarled and twisted. Yet it's still doing what God intended for it to do. And it's still everything that God intended for it to be. You know, it doesn't matter our age tonight, whether we're 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. We're never too old to be fruitful when we're connected to the vine. Don't say your best days are behind you. That tree survived many storms, but it's still standing and it's still producing. Everybody has something that they can do for the Lord, for humanity, for people. Everybody can pray. <laughs> Everybody can pray. Everybody can witness to a soul. Everybody can bring somebody to church. Everybody can call somebody on the phone with a word of encouragement. Say, brother, I'm praying for you. Listen to this word I've got. Listen to this scripture. It's awesome. And praise the Lord together. That's being fruitful. Isaiah 46 verse 4 says, Even to your old age, I am he. And even to whore hairs will I carry you. I have made you and I will bear you. I will even carry you and I will deliver you. Hallelujah. What a promise that is tonight. To your old age. Sister Maria, nice to see you tonight. I was talking about old age and you popped in. Hallelujah. You're not that old though. Hallelujah. Just teasing you. It's nice to see you. Even to your old age, he said, I will carry you. Psalm 52 verse 8. The psalmist said, but I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. Psalm 16, verse 1 says, Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. Psalm 1611 says, Thou wilt show me the path of life, and in thy presence is fullness of joy, and at thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Oh, I don't know why anyone who may have tasted of the goodness of God would want to turn their back on the presence of Almighty God and turn their back on the presence of the fullness of joy and the pleasures of God that he has for his people. My Lord, the path of life. Psalm 71, 15 to 24. And I love this, this, these verses of scripture tonight. And I know we're not preaching tonight, we're just bringing a little study. It says, my mouth shall show forth thy righteousness and thy salvation all the day. Oh, hallelujah. Not just when we're feeling good, but he said all the day long. For I know not the numbers thereof. We don't know the numbers of our days. We don't know what tomorrow is going to hold. We don't know what 15 minutes from now is going to hold. So why not in that time that we have to show forth the salvation of the Lord? I will go in the strength of the Lord God. I will make mention of thy righteousness. O God, thou hast taught me from my youth, and hitherto have, have I declared thy wondrous works. Now also, when I am old and gray-headed, O God, forsake me not. 
uh, until I have showed thy strength unto this generation and thy power to everyone that is to come. Thy righteousness also, O God, is very high, who has done great things. O God, who is like unto thee? Can you think of anyone, anyone, anything who was like unto our God? Why would we want to serve anything else? Why would we want to forsake him? Why would we want to cut off the life flow and not allow it to come into our branches so we might live and have abundant life? Thou which has showed me great and sore troubles, that we not all had some great and sore troubles, you shall quicken me again and shall bring me up again from the depths of the earth. Oh, hallelujah tonight. Don't ever say that your situation is hopeless. Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Do you need a comfort of God tonight? Do you, do you need God to comfort you tonight? Why don't you hook up into the vine? Why don't you call on his name right where you are tonight? It goes on to say, I will praise thee with the psaltery, even thy truth, O my God. Unto thee will I sing with the harp, O thou Holy One of Israel. My lips shall greatly rejoice when I sing unto thee, and my soul which thou hast redeemed. O hallelujah, hallelujah. My lips shall greatly rejoice, I'm going to say that again, when I sing unto thee. Get a song in your heart. Let the, let the presence of God just flow through your body from the vine into you, the branch, so you may bring forth the fruit of praise. Oh, God, because you have redeemed me. Glory, you brought me out of the camp of the enemy. And finally, my tongue also shall talk of thy righteousness all the day long. For they are confounded, for they are brought unto shame that seek my hurt. Got some things coming against you? People coming against you? Oh, if you do, talk of his righteousness all the day. Let them be confounded. Jesus, God will fight for you tonight. God will fight for you tonight. Hallelujah. If you connect to the vine. Elders, if you're watching tonight and you're an elder in your home tonight, if you're older in life, if you're younger, if you're middle-aged, when we abide in his presence, in the vine, Jesus Christ, we will never grow old. As the old song says, never grow old. Our life is eternal. Hallelujah. If we wait on him and serve him like a waiter, we can remain fruitful until the end of this age, until the end of this life. You see, there's no sitting on the sidelines when you serve God. Everybody can pray. Everybody can call someone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah you can do something to be fruitful. God's team needs you. I'm going to say that again. God's team needs you. He needs me. He needs all of us, from the oldest to the youngest. You may just be, you may be home and not able to get out. You can be fruitful. You can, I know people that knit blankets and mittens and scarves and and they do it for, the, for missions. They do it for those in need. Oh, that's being fruitful. And they pray over them before they go out. That's being fruitful. Everybody can do something. He told us to go to the highways and the hedges and compel men to come to the house of the Lord. Here is where we become his mouthpiece. We become his voice in the world. You know what? You are God's voice in this world. You are his hands extended. Most of us are familiar with the scripture in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8. 
It says, the voice of the Lord said, who shall I send? Here am I, Lord. Send me. It always amazed me because the prophet overheard God talking to someone. He said, who shall I send? Who shall I send in this job? The prophet was living close enough to the Lord where he overheard his conversation. And he said, Lord, here am I. Send me. Lord, send me out to reach the lost. And I'm a huge proponent of the local church because as they did in the book of Acts that we spoke about at the beginning, 3,000 souls were saved in one day and they hooked them up to the church. They didn't just let them go. We can go out on the streets and find somebody and pray for them and say, hey, I prayed for somebody and they got saved today. Do you have a church to bring them to? Do you have a place where their life can be established? Where they can go on in the fellowship of God's people and hook up to the vine of the church? Oh, dear God. Tonight, your first step to getting that life of Jesus alive in you, and you can do it. Get into his presence and start to praise him. You can do it tonight, right where you're watching. You may have been away from the presence of God for a while, but tonight, Jesus can be alive in you. And if he's alive in you tonight, you can praise him all the more. When Paul and Silas sang and praised, in prison, their chains fell off. The prison gates were opened. <laughs> their song and their praise set the Spirit of God in motion, and hell had to step back and watch, because praise makes your enemy powerless. Oh, tonight, you got some enemies facing you? You got some things, some chains that are around you? I. If you got chains, I suggest you get to church Sunday morning and get to the altar. You can get to church Wednesday night and get to the altar. Get in his presence before those chains get a little tighter hold on you. Jesus, but when you praise him tonight, you set the spirit of God in motion for your life. Sometimes we don't need to repent. Sometimes we just need to praise him a little bit more and to get out of ourselves, to get out of the flesh and into the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Sometimes we just need to praise him a little more, to lift him up a little higher, to push Satan a little lower. Lift up Jesus a little higher, pushes Satan a little bit lower. Then his presence will come to you, and the Holy Ghost will come and talk through you. Your victory tonight begins with your willingness to lay yourself down to let God take control and allow him free reign and access in your life. If your vessel of oil is empty tonight, fill it up. Get some oil tonight in your lamp. Trim your wick. Wipe the soot from the glass chimney and let your light shine to this lost world. Don't be foolish like the foolish virgins and put it off another day. But be wise and stay full. Hallelujah. What made them wise? They knew enough to refill. They never run on empty. Is your low fuel light on tonight? If it is, get to the filling station. Get to God's presence. Get to his altars if you can make it to church. Oh, it makes all the difference in the world. There's nothing like being amongst the body of believers. This morning, the power of God that was in our church, oh my Lord, it could set anybody free. If your branches are dry tonight and they're weathering up a little bit and there's little sap running from the vine, would you let God reign in your soul tonight? 
Would you let the sunlight of his presence warm your inner man? Would you let his life flow through you? Hallelujah. Oh, his presence. There is nothing in the world that can compare to the presence of Almighty God. And it can, it can fill you right where you are tonight. So I encourage you tonight that God is for you. God's for you tonight. Tell that to yourself. God is for me tonight. Yes, I love being in your presence, Lord Jesus. See, God's waiting for your praise. Why don't you put your hands up right now and just start to praise him and see what he'll do in you. So I ask you tonight, will you continue to abide in him? Will you continue to stay connected to him? To be dependent upon him? And to continue in him? There is nothing I like better than to see a flourishing tree. A flourishing tree is the, one of the most beautiful things I think that God has ever created. And there's some trees, I wasn't even gonna talk about this tonight. This is, I was, I was gonna close here. But let this be a new day for you. If you've lost connection, get connected. If you've been too dependent on yourself, become dependent upon him. Sister Loretta, God bless you. Continue, he said, in my word. Yes, thank you, Lord. But you know, a flourishing tree, it's the most beautiful thing there is. But you know, one thing about trees is the sequoia trees out in California are over 250 feet tall, yet their roots only go about six feet deep. How in the world? And some of them are 20 to 30 feet wide. You can drive a car through them. But they hold each other up. <laughs> they hold each other up. Their root system intertwine, and they hold each other up. They provide nutrients to each other. They feed off of each other. See, this is why we need the body of Christ. Oh, yes, we do. And you know, God says that you will flourish in my courts like the palm tree the palm tree if you look at a palm tree there's many different kinds of palm trees many many different kinds and god has made them all beautiful do you want to flourish tonight if you flourish like the palm tree and there's many varieties of palm trees he's made everyone beautiful nothing more beautiful than a palm tree if you go to florida so tonight, I encourage you, and those, those trees live off the nutrients. Those leaves are beautiful because it has the nutrients in the vine. Tonight, your life can be made beautiful when you're, you, the branch, stays connected to the vine, Jesus Christ. So tonight, let this be a new day. He said, you made something beautiful out of my life. And the other thing I like is that many, many of the palm trees are self-pruning. Think about this. You go to Florida and there's many palm trees and you see the, the brown palm leaves and they fall to the ground and the new ones start to come out. When you live in the Spirit, you become self-pruning too. Because those things that don't belong just fall off and life comes to you through the vine. Tonight, I hope God blesses you abundantly. I'm looking forward to getting back into the house of God Wednesday and we hope we see you there. So tonight, if you have a need, if you just need to get a little closer to Jesus, you can put your hands up right now, right where you are. Let's pray tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you tonight and we love you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your spirit. Lord, we thank you for the life, Lord, the life of the vine. 
Lord, let us stay connected to you. Let us remain dependent on you and let us continue in you. For Lord, there's a day coming, Lord, where you're coming back for your people. Lord, it's going to be a day where you're going to take your bride away. Lord, we must be ready for that day. For if we're not ready, God, I don't want to be left behind. Lord, I want to go with you. I want to be where you are. Lord, I want to be in your presence, not just in this world, but in the ages to come. Father, bless everyone on this broadcast tonight. Lord, if they're feeling weak tonight, Lord, strengthen them. If they're sick tonight, oh God, I pray that you would heal them. Oh, Jesus, tonight. Lord, we just need more of you every day. And we thank you tonight. And we praise you for your goodness and your mercies and your graces to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. So God bless you all tonight. You have a wonderful week. And we hope to see you soon. God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you some more. Good night.